So, in this lecture 4, I will discuss about the soil exploration. So, in lecture 3, so I have discussed about what are the different laboratory methods or experiments we generally conduct to determine the strain parameter of the soil and the consolidation parameter of the soil. So, those values are required for determining determination of the bearing capacity of the foundation and the settlement of the foundation. So, now in this lecture, I will discuss what are the field tests generally we conduct to determine the soil properties which will be used or will be required to design the foundation. So, first uh, what is the definition of soil expression? So, this definition uh, is the field and laboratory investigation required to obtain the necessary data for the proper design and successful construction of any structure or foundation on a particular site is collectively called as soil exploration. So, the choice of the foundation, the bearing capacity of the soil, settlement analysis of the soil, those all depends on various engineering properties of the foundation soil. So, these properties are to be determined by some field as well as the laboratory test. So, the here in this lecture, I will discuss mainly on the field test, those are conducted to determine these required properties. So, first the primary objective of a soil exploration are the determination of the nature of the zip deposit of the soil, then depth and the thickness of the each soil layer. As, uh, as we know that soil is a layered material. So, what is the thickness of each layer and at what depth it starts and ends. So, those the informations are required to design a foundation. So, the location of groundwater table is also very important to know, so that we can design our foundation based on that. So, location of groundwater table also determination of groundwater location of groundwater table also is one of the objective of this soil exploration. Now, the in the soil exploration we collect the soil or rock sample from the uh, site and then we bring the sample in the lab and test in the lab to determine the soil properties. In addition to that, we can determine the in situ properties of the soil by performing field test. So, what are the things uh, we determine or what are the data are required? So, in terms of soil profile, as I mentioned, the layer thickness and the soil identification and the starting and the end depth of the each layer is also important. Then the index properties, so that is the water content, Atterberg limit. So, these are very important. Then the strength and compressibility characteristics. So, the strength uh, material is equation, uh, friction angle, then compression index C OCR over consolidated ratio. So, this over consolidated ratio as I mentioned, I have mentioned about the normally consolidated soil and the over consolidated soil. So, for the over con uh, normally consolidated soil, this OCR value is taken as 1, because in the normally consolidated soil, so your the present stress which is greater than the maximum past stress which is soil is experienced. So, here uh, we assume that this uh, for the normally consolidated uh, soil, this OCR value is 1, but for the over consolidated soil, where the present stress is less than the stress, uh, than the stress which the soil is already experienced. So, here this ratio is the past maximum experienced stress of the soil divided by the 
present stress that we are applying. So, I have already discussed that how we can determine the maximum past effective overburden stress or maximum past stress that soil is experienced by Kasagan Ray's method. So, I have already discussed. So, we can get that value from E log P curve and applying the Kasagan Ray's method, we can determine what is P C. So, that P C is the past maximum effective overburden stress that this soil is experienced. The ratio between the maximum past stress the soil is experienced and the present test, uh, present stress. And then other things the water table which is also you have to determine what these data are also required for our design purpose. Now, there are the methods. So, first method that is the direct method or the test speed. So, if you look at the figure, this is the uh, photographs of a test speed. So, this um, so this is the test speed or trench are often type of a uh, is, is a open type of exploration method where soil can be inspected in their natural condition and the necessary soil sample may be collected at the sampling techniques sampling techniques and use for and use for finding strength and other engineering properties by the and laboratory test so we can collect the soil sample from the site itself and those samples we can use to determine the soil properties in the laboratory so and the another advantage is that this trench pit we have to the depth of the trench pit should be the equal to the depth of the foundation that mean at what depth you are placing your foundation. So, that depth will be equal to the depth of the trench from where on that depth we can collect the soil sample and we can bring the soil sample in the laboratory for the determination of the soil properties. So, that is why this method is suitable for very small depth up to 3 meter and the cost of the this cost increases rapidly with depth and when we increase the depth of this trench. So, we have to provide the lateral support and that is why. So, this the cost requirement will increase if we increase the depth. So, that is why this method is suitable for some small depth up to 3 meter and test pit are usually made only for supplementing other method or for minor structures. So, next method is the semi direct methods or the borings. So, here so borings that is the making or drilling bore holes into the ground with a view of obtaining soil or the rock sample from specific or known depth is called the boring. So, boring you have to do to collect the soil sample for a particular specific depth and those soil sample we use for our laboratory test to determine the determine the uh, soil properties. Sometimes these borings are also required to conduct the field test for a particular depth. So, the common methods of borings are the auger borings, wash boring, rotary drilling and percussion drilling. So, one by one I will explain what is these uh, methods are. So, first method is the auger boring. So, the soil auger is a device that is useful for advancing a borehole into the ground. So, this soil auger we use for the advancing of a borehole a construction of a borehole uh, in the ground. It will also use to collect the soil sample and those soil samples we use for the um, in the laboratory test. So, auger may be hand operated or power driven. If it is the hand operated, then we can use it for relatively small depth up to 3 to 5 meter. If it is a power driven, then we can use this method up to a greater depth up to 60 to 70 meter uh, in case of continuous light auger. So, 
you can go up to 60 to 70 meter is it is the power driven. So, auger boring is convenient in case of partially saturated sand, sealed and medium to steep cohesive soil. Now, the, um, the process by which we can conduct this auger bearing. So, this figure you can see these are different types of uh, sub augers. So, this is the one type of auger and this is the another type of auger and this is the rod. Suppose, if I want to increase the this uh, drill rod height. So, we can attach another rod and we can increase it. So, uh, by attaching the number of rods we can increase this height. So, that we can collect the soil sample or we can uh, advance the borehole up to the required depth. So, first is the soil auger is advanced by rotating it while pressing it into the ground. So, that means, first we have to place the auger onto the ground and then we have to press it and then as well as we rotate it. So, that this auger, so this portion of this auger. So, this will this will be pushed into the ground or by pressing it as well as rotating it. As soon as the auger gets filled with the soil, we it is taken out and the soil sample is corrected. So, once you uh, I mean push it this auger into the ground. So, it will be filled with uh, soil sample. So, when it is filled with soil sample, we take it this uh, auger out from the soil and then collect the soil sample. The soil sample obtained from this type of boring highly disturbed. So, it is, it is expected. So, you can see we are just pressing it and rotating it and collecting the soil sample. So, it is obvious that soil sample which we are collecting by this method is disturbed. So, I have one YouTube video link. So, uh, this link is uh, given in the in the skin. So, you can see this is the typical this auger drilling. So, this is one type of auger. So, this is the power driven. So, it is rotated into the ground and then it will insert into the ground. So, and the soil sample you can see it is inserted into the ground and on the soil sample is also. So, when it is inserted into the ground, so you can see that The soil sample is also collected and this is the soil sample which is collected and then we can make this soil sample and we can uh, collect this soil sample for our uh, laboratory test purpose. So, this is one typical example of the auger drilling. So, Next one is the shell and auger, which is widely used in India. In uh, this, there is a this is a sh uh, heavy duty shell or a heavy duty pipe. Basically, this is a heavy duty pipe on which a cutting edge is attached. So, and there is a one way valve that means this valve will open only in this direction. So, this valve will open in this direction only. So, once it is filled this valve the soil is enter into this uh, pipe or the shell it will not come back again. So, because it is the one way valve. So, what is the process here the shell is raised because this is the shell is raised because this shell is attached with a cable and this shell is raised and let fall in a hole and the soil is cut as there is a cutting edge there and the soil is cut and enters into the tube and then when this tube is full then we uh, remove it is we we take this uh, shell or the tube from the borehole 
and we collect the soil sample and this shell is used when the auger boring is very difficult. So, that is why is when by this method we can collect the uh, uh, soil sample when the auger boring is very difficult. In that case, we have to adopt a different methodology uh, later on I will discuss. So, methodology to construct the borehole. So, next one is the is the wash boring. So, wash boring is commonly used for exploration below ground water table for which auger method is not suitable. So, as I mentioned the auger methods which is if it is not suitable, then you have to go for the uh, wash boring when it is below ground water table. This method is may be used for oil kind of soil except those mixed with gravel and boulder. So, a casing pipe is pushed and driven into the soil with the help of drop weight. So, I have the process. So, this is a casing pipe which is pushed into the soil and driven with a help of drop weight. So, a drop weight. So, this is a tripod by which a drop weight a weight is applied or by which a casing pipe is pushed and driven into the soil and the hollow drill bit. So, this is a hollow drill bit is screwed with a hollow drill rod. So, in, in this is the bit which is attached with a rod and connected to a rope passing over a pulley. So, this thing is connected with a rope which is passing over a pulley and supported by a tripod and the water jet under pressure is forced through the rod and the bit into the hole which basically allow the soil become loose. So, here we apply a water jet through the rod to the bit on the soil so that the soil become loose. So, this this once this water is applied water jet is applied the soil become loose. So, we have a soil water uh, suspension. So, this suspension is forced upward uh, and allowed to settle in a tank where the soil particles settle while the water overflow into a sump. So, that means this water and soil suspension is forced to uh, move upward and then this suspension is allowed to set settle in a tank where this soil particle settle down and the water is overflows into a sum. So, those soil particles we use for our testing purpose. So, uh, so, obvious the material or the soil particles uh, or that are collected or soil that are collected is, is very disturbed sample and not very useful for evaluation of engineering property basically the strength properties. Later on I will discuss that when uh, what are the cases where we will use the disturbed soil sample and when we will use the undisturbed soil sample. So, these method that till now I have discussed here all the methods we will collect the disturbed soil sample only. So, and the, the primary use of this wash boring is the advancing boreholes and whenever a soil sample is required then the this chopping bit is replaced by a sampler. So, uh, and then we can collect the soil to the sampler also. So, that means here there is a two, two things I am talking about when the we are collecting the soil sample uh, in terms of soil water suspension that is one process and another process we can collect the soil sample by sampler tube also. So, this what is the sampler tube I will explain later on that what are the different kinds of sampler tubes and when we use these tubes to collect the soil sample whether it is disturbed or undisturbed. 
So, now this is the one process we can collect it by sampler tube by replacing the bait or we can collect the soil suspension and we settle down uh, where the soil particle settle down and we can use that soil sample for the testing purpose also. The change of the uh, rate of progress or the change of the color of water or wash water indicate that there is a change in the soil strata. So, that is also will help us to uh, identify whether there is a change in soil strata or not by changing progress rate of progress or the change in color of the wash water. And uh, there is also one YouTube link. So, this is the this water jet is applied into this drill rod to the soil to become uh, the for so that soil become the loose and then this suspension are forced to move upward direction and this is the tripod and the pulley and those suspension are basically collected and then it allow to settle the soil soil particles and water is overflow so this is the wash boring methods that pickle things are talking about so next one is rotary drilling so this is can be used for sand clay and rock unless this is badly fissured so this rock part i am not talking about so in this course i will uh, discuss about the soil only so i will concentrate only the soil part so this is very fast method and even rock course may be obtained by using uh, suitable diamond uh, drill bit. So, we can uh, obtain the rock sample also by using this methods. So, the process. So, a drill bit uh, fixed at the lower end of a drill rod and it is rotated by power while being kept in firm contact with the hole. So, here also you can see there is a, a drill rod so, this, uh, this drill rod there is a drill, uh, drilling bit is attached with this drill rod and which is rotated uh, by a powers and a drilling fluid or bentonite, bentonite slurry is forced under pressure through the drill rod and it comes up bringing the cutting to the surface. So, that means, we apply a bentonite uh, slurry or drilling fluid through this rod. So, that uh, under pressure, so that when there is a we are rotating this uh, drilling bit into the soil. So, the material which is uh, uh, cutted through this method, we can bring this material to the surface with this uh, uh, slurry under pressure. So, when the soils again when the soil samples are required the drilling rod is raised and drilling bit is replaced by a sampler. So, again like the wash boring we can collect the soil sample by either sampler tube or we can collect as a this uh, bent slurry form. So, that is both way we can collect. So, there is one uh, YouTube video, this link is also given. So, you can see there is a slurry which is allowed this uh, cutted material to move upward and through this drilling rod and there is this is the drilling bit. So, that is and when the sample we want to collect the soil sample we remove this drilling bit. So, this is the one method. Then the fourth one it is the percussion drilling. So, this method cannot be used for loose sand and is slow this process is slow in plastic clay. The formation gets badly disturbed by impact. 
So, the process is, so this is a typical figure. So, the pro, this is a tripod, the process is the heavy drill bit is suspended from a drill rod or a cable and it is driven by repeated blows. So, here we are applying the blows to drive this drill bit. So, and the water is also added to facilitate the breaking of steep soil or rock, if the soil is rock or steep. So, we apply the uh, blows to, to drive this rod with the heavy duty bit by repeated um, into the soil, but we also add the water um, to facilitate or breaking the steep or the rock. The slurry, uh, because as we are adding the water, so the slurry of the pulverized material is bailed out at interval or it is released at uh, intervals and so that this way we can collect the soil samples. So, these are the methods by which we can, so we have uh, these are the different references. So, these are the methods by which we can collect the soil sample as I am mentioned. So, these soil samples are highly disturbed. So, so that means, these soil samples uh, we are not by this method we are not able to collect the undisturbed soil samples. So, now uh, this is the differ two ways some in some methods we are two way, way we can collect the soil sample. One is this undisturbed soil sample. Uh, by collecting this uh, material from the site. Another, we can collect the soil sample by sampler tube. So, in the sampler tube, we will later on in the next classes, I will discuss that what is the sampler tube, what would be the thickness of sampler tube, so that we can collect the disturbed or undisturbed soil sample uh, by using this sampler tube. So, if I use a uh, a particular type of sampler tube, we can collect disturbed sample as well as we can collect undisturbed sample. So, those things and again you know, you, we are collecting the disturbed sample. So, when you use this disturbed sample and when you use the undisturbed soil sample, those things I will also discuss in the next classes. Thank you.